Hey there, Shuby Doodlers, and welcome to a whole new raft of stuff going on on the Shoe Rainer Drawing Channel. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be trying all sorts of new stuff, and the first thing is prizes. Uh, well, there's not a competition though, uh, it's a prize for the person whose work I like the best. And how am I going to get to see your work? Well, I want you to click right here, and this button is going to take you through to the Your Shoe Rainer Drawings community page on G+. And there you can join the community and upload your drawings. But I don't want you to just upload any old stuff. Uh, what I'm intending now is each month I'm going to choose a theme. And this month it is going to be seaside holidays. And I'm going to show you how to draw all sorts of seaside holiday kind of stuff. Uh, and in amongst that I'm going to be teaching you techniques and things as well. Uh, and I would like you to take those elements and then put them together with other elements and create something more than just the drawing. I want you to add your own style, I want you to add your own ideas and just build and be creative. And it's the creativity is what I'm really looking for. So prizes, what can you win? So let's have a look at what you get. There is a, an exclusive Shoe Rainer sketchbook. Lots of lovely white sheets of paper, which is A4. Whoops. And then you will get my book, Everyone Can Draw. Uh, you will get two, not one, but two water brushes. So we've got a medium one and a fine one. You will get an art eraser, for which you will need a Derwent graphic pencil. And you will probably want to have a rotary ticky graphic pen as well. And to top it all off, those kind people at um, Windsor and Newton have sent me, especially for you, uh, a Skechers pocket box set. So you will also get a brand new set like that. Isn't that amazing? So thank you very much Windsor and Newton. And what you have to do to win all of this? Well, you just have to be great. It's not a competition. This is a prize as in something I'm gonna give to somebody who I think is really good. Well, thanks to Windsor & Newton, I think that adds up to a pretty good prize. And uh, I may have some other little things up my sleeve as well. But now we need to get on and do some drawing. I'm going to show you how to draw a bucket and spade. <laughs> let's not talk about it. Let's do it. OK, let's draw a bucket and spade. And um, bucket, a bucket is basically a tube. And when you look at the tube end on, it's a circle. And when you turn a circle, uh, angle it slightly, it turns into an ellipse, which is what we get at the top of the bucket. And it kind of folds over because it's a, it's a, it's a plastic molding. Um, and then that will come something like that along the top. Now I'm doing all sorts of new things here. So one thing I'm going to try and do <laughs> is because I found quite a lot on this channel. But I kind of start trying to do things that don't come naturally. So, so I'm going to show you the drawing kind of stuff in pencil and how that kind of works. And then the rest of it I'm going to do in my style. And what I want you, what I'm really wanting in my kind of new look, new approach is to get you finding your style. Um, and so it's not just about drawing, it's kind of about creativity as well. So we've got this uh, plastic handle coming out. And it's sort of coming out at an angle like that. And you've got a sort of thinness of it, but then you've got the sideness of it, if you follow what I mean. And then we want to have the spade. And I'm going to have that dug in here. And I'm thinking, I think I'm going to have it like that. So they kind of point inwards, don't they? The, the, the shovel part of the spade, they kind of come in a little bit like that. So it's kind of a box that's stuck into the sand. It'll be a bit deeper on that side. Um, and then we're going to have kind of a tube coming up there. I'm going to, wait, I'm going to draw a line coming up all the way. So there'll be a tube there, a plastic kind of tube, out of which will come a little bit of wood, kind of a wooden handle. 
and then at the top again we could change into plastic uh, are we on the camera there we are. <laughs> so many things to think about um and i'm thinking that that's kind of the the center line there so i'm going to bring that around so that we get that line this u shape centered around that line there and then that will come up to the top and around so we'll see a little bit inside there and that will be kind of rounded and here we're going to want to see a little bit of the thickness of the whole thing like that and it might just be rounded at the top there as well and I think that's kind of got it now now if you've been watching my uh, money tree drawings just recently you'll have noticed I've been I've changed I've been using a, a rotary ticky graphic 0.3 or a 0.4 for a long time and because I had to drill them much smaller um, I found uh, a thinner nib would be much better and that kind of took me back to when I first started as an illustrator I used to a very thin nib an even thinner one than this and and I rather enjoyed doing that so I thought I'm going to play around with this for a while and I'm trying to do lots of new kind of approaches on this channel and one thing is I'm going to stop trying to <laughs> be other people and I'm just going to draw in my own kind of way so some of it's a bit sloppy but that's how I am I know some of you are a little bit OCD <laughs> and you want to see it absolutely fine and you don't like it you go ooh when I make a mistake like there but that's just kind of my style and I'm kind of coming around here and then just dotting it around there and this will come around and then just kind of dot around the top like that and we want this to come down about there and that will come down about there and I'm going to put some little bits of shading in there and I'm going to put some in here too and a bit down here just to give it a bit of a kind of scribbliness really <laughs> um, start about there and that will come up and around and down there are certain difficulties actually drawing under the camera. I'm drawing on flat, whereas I would normally have it at an angle. Um, and I can't sort of move my hand around in the ways that I would normally draw. So it is a little strange doing it like this. And at the same time, I'm worrying about the camera all the time and camera angles and <laughs> things. And I'm going to zoom out so you can see how I paint this. But first, I'm going to make sure that's dry before I erase that. I've had two questions this week. One from Cassandra Bergstrom. Um, and she says, what paper are you using? Well, I'm using Derwent watercolour paper. Superior smooth surface. Uh, and it is very, very smooth. It's 300 GSM or 140 pounds. I'll put a link up here where you can get it and uh, I like it smooth you know you can get that watercolor paper that has little dimples in it which looks really great in kind of wishy-washy watercolor seascapes and landscapes but uh, you know I, I I work really for stuff to be scanned for books and things like that and and the scanners just don't like that paper very much so I like a really smooth paper and also viewer King Specs asked why was I using a different brush in the money tree videos go and have a look at those here and well, I'm using the different brush again. I'm not using a water brush. Um, I'm using a, uh, what is it? Uh, it's a Cornelison and Son Da Vinci Maestro Tobolsky Kolinsky. <laughs> it's a sable paintbrush. It's a number two. And it's quite pointy. You get lots of different shapes of brushes. And these are the ones that I just like. And I'm going to start uh, around the 
the top here and this can be quite intense color here and here I'm going to put the color there so uh, the reason why uh, and then I'm going to fade it <laughs> right to the edges the reason why I'm using this brush and then I'm just going to drop a bit more solid color in here like that so it kind of fades out to the edges um, I'm not using a water brush because the water brush has water in handle and it's constantly flowing which is constantly thinning down the color which is great for uh, you know mucking about and out and about sketching uh, but here I want to be more in control of the color so I'm using an old-fashioned traditional paintbrush um, you, know, uh, you know people have asked me also about you know sable versus you know modern nylon brushes and um, you know it's quite hard to tell the difference between some of them sometimes um, and I think particularly if you want a really good point on your brush, then, you know, modern nylon, whatever they are, brushes are pretty good. So, but, you know, I was always brought up in the old days that Sable was best. And I think of all the natural hair brushes, then Sable is definitely the best for watercolour. Leave a little bit of white there for the reflection on the edge as, the, uh, as it turns. And then I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre on the edge there, and I put a bit of yellow ochre down here, a bit of yellow ochre down the side there as well, and maybe a bit on the edge there like that as well, and under there, maybe a bit there. Let's move on to the spade. Now I'm going to use blue for this, and blue is a, not an easy colour to handle. <laughs> I don't know why. So I'm going to just put a little bit on the top there. And then I'm going to leave a gap, so that's going to be the reflection. And we might want a little, leave a little gap down the edge there too, and maybe there. Maybe. Now you can. These are all highlights. These are this is where the sun is reflecting on the plastic, and you can do this either by painting this way and leaving out. <laughs> so you're using the white of the paper for. The highlight or you can of course just paint it all blue and then do the white in on the top in white paint in a thicker kind of gouache kind of white paint and there are times I do that it just depends and sometimes I haven't quite got it right and so I need to put a bit more highlight in afterwards uh, and now I'm going to come down to here so it'll be Hmm, there's going to be a highlight going about there, and probably on the edge there as well. Certainly on the edge there, and then we can paint it all in there. And then I'm getting you know pretty solid colours picking up straight from the the pan. These. Oh, you can't quite see it there, can you? There we are. These these little bits here. These are called half pans in the um, paint box and uh, you can get the you know it, it comes with a whole set and I've immediately I've taken out the white and the black and I've replaced it with Naples yellow and neutral tint which come from the artist watercolor range these are all the Cotman range um, and these are colours that I've just always used. So I've used the neutral tint for shadows and things forever. And I find black is just too dark in watercolour. It just... Uh, it just kind of wipes everything out. <laughs> I've heard, oh, that's too... Um, I've heard they've developed a new Nano <laughs> product, a new Nano paint, which is so black that you think it's just not there and apparently the eye just can't cope with it <laughs> it just looks like a hole in space <laughs> i can't wait to see it one day that'd be really amazing and it's sort of the way it reflects the light so it doesn't matter what shape you're painting it it just you just can't see any contour in it it just looks like a black hole in space <laughs> um, and sometimes painting with black in 
watercolour does that too. So I use neutral tint, which is a little, got a little bit of, it's a kind of a blue black, and it's a bit easier to handle. Um, we can get a bit of shadow there, but the, I think it'll be a bit darker there. I think I'll put a bit there as well. Because it's going to be quite dark under there. And I think also it might get a bit dark down at the bottom here. Oh, I meant to put some sand in the bucket, I forgot. And there. Well, we want a nice red handle. I feel terribly pressurised when I'm making these videos. I feel I have to really rush them. and I think if I was painting on my own, I would, without a camera, I would be doing it slightly differently. Uh, I would have it on a slope for a start. So this is, I'm painting this um, flat on the table, which is not natural for me. I always tilt it when I'm painting. And because of the camera in the way as well, I can't lean over the painting to quite see exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> so, I've got limitations. But, let's call them limitations, I don't want to make excuses. <laughs> Are they limitations? Or am I just not doing things like I normally, in the normal kind of way? So now I'm using Naples Yellow here to... Uh, Put the sand in. I'm just going to splash that in there like that. And maybe up a bit there. And I think I'm just going to put a hint of sea in the background. I get a little bit of green and a little bit of blue. Maybe a touch more green, maybe a little bit more blue in there. I'm going to make that really thin. And I'm just going to put this. That makes a lovely kind of turquoise -y kind of colour. Like and you might then like to take the picture on and start putting some little boats in the background or seagulls or something like that. <laughs> now I think I'm going to want a little bit of sort of shadow coming in here so I'm going to put that in in pencil and also I think I'm going to want some more shadow in down there. Now oh, I'm going to get a bit of neutral tint a little bit of blue and I'm going to put that in here on the sand for this is the shadow on the sand there and then just to make the picture a little bit more I'm just going to take it a little bit wider <laughs> and why am I doing this because I'm going to put this up for sale <laughs> and you might want to Put it in a frame or something like that so you want that extra bit to frame it like that and uh what shall i charge oh i can charge ten dollars and that's what i'm going to do from now and i'm going to put these little drawings up for sale because i just got thousands of them and i don't know what to do with them <laughs> so i'm going to put this up for sale click here to find out how you can get it first one first one there gets it and I'm not going to wrap it up or anything. This is a postcard. I'm going to stick a stamp on the back and send it to you. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm going to start off at $10. And if they start getting popular and people start collecting them, then I'm going to have to put the price up. So get in early. <laughs> uh, I feel I need something more going on down here. It just doesn't feel quite right. I think we got a, should have a shadow from this. Um, Made it a bit dirty, isn't it? There, but anyway, I'm going to put a bit more. Just one more thing to do. Well, now, quite often I will finish off with a little bit of crayon. I, I call these crayons, but of course they're not crayons. That's an old-fashioned term. <laughs> they're, uh, what are they called? <laughs> they're called coloured pencils. Of course, this will be much darker that side. I wasn't thinking when I painted that. That's probably much darker in there. And of course, I might want to put a little bit of kind of wood effect on there as well. Good. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, go and have a look at my other video here, Draw Cartoon People, or have a go at the mystery drawing. Either way, make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing channel for new drawing videos every Monday and Friday. If you can visit my newish website, Shoe Rainer Drawing, which is going to be all about drawing. And I'm planning maybe on doing a live broadcast on Wednesday at six o'clock British time. So uh, I'll maybe see you there. <laughs> Until then, <laughs> you take care now. Keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.